And for me, that's just a general trend I've noticed about my accommodations. Like they're there in place for me and they're accessible like accommodations for me. But oftentimes I find myself unable to use them, which is so frustrating because I'm like, why are they even there? Hi, my name is Emily. I am a senior here at UMD and I am a disabled student. I am someone who like occasionally uses the wheelchair and then occasionally uses my prosthetic, but it's not something that I can really control. Just because it takes so much energy on my part to kind of plan for the future, to plan for when I need to use the wheelchair, even though I don't know when that's gonna happen. The hills on campus are just very steep and so I had a lot of trouble just getting myself up like slight hills and even like the ramps to get into my buildings and one of them was actually so steep that I nearly like tipped backwards in my wheelchair and my friend was right there and she caught me so that I didn't tip backwards but in that moment I was just like wow like you designed this for me, but I can't use it. And it was just so like outrageous for me. When I started looking into the paratransit website, I like was scheduling my rides and it told me that I couldn't schedule them because there were no rides available. I was so mentally exhausted just talking to paratransit that I just decided to ask my friends for help to like help me around campus because I was just so done with the process and I didn't want any more steps that I had to do. We're making all of these accommodations and creating the plans and the ideas for them. I think that we really need to emphasize the importance of having like disabled people actually being a part of that process because otherwise you have ramps that are too steep for people to get up. You have accommodations that are kind of like half-hearted that even when they're there, people can't use them and they're not readily accessible. And just me constantly having to self-advocate like over and over and over again, that is something that is very mentally exhausting. On top of like my regular responsibilities as a student, it was so much for me to balance just trying to go about my life because these things that were supposed to be in place for me were not there for me when I needed them. I created, alongside my friends, a club on campus, which is new. It's Disability, Identity, Culture, and Education. What we wanna do with this club is that we really want to create a community for people and we want to show people that their experiences are not isolated. They are completely valid in their experiences, their frustration, their emotions. And we can also take control of it by like doing things. We can make sure that the ramps are like accessible. We can make sure that paratransit is available and all that. We want to normalize disability. We want to not see it as something to be pitied or something that makes someone vulnerable or like lesser than. The biggest thing is not only having this source of community, but also making it so that people are actually like looking into topics of disability. It's great to have disabled voices being heard. It's great to bring in disability activists and to make that community, and that's much, much needed. I think it's also important for just non-disabled people to go out and seek this information for themselves to kind of take a little bit of burden away from disabled people and to help them, to truly help them.